أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي أنزل القرآن في شهر رمضان هدى للناس أحمده سبحانه وتعالى وأشكره أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القرآن العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وسارعوا إلى مغفرة من ربكم وجنة عرضها السماوات والأرض أعدت للمتقين صدق الله العظيم All praises are for Allah سبحانه وتعالى He Allah who revealed the glorious Quran in the month of Ramadan as guidance for mankind We glorify Allah and we give thanks unto Him I testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah. He is alone and he has no partner. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is his servant and final messenger. Ibadullah, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Al-Quran, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرُدُهَا السَّمَوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضِ And make haste, march forth to the forgiveness of your Lord and to Jannah and to Paradise. The width of it is the heavens and the earth put together. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and it has been prepared for those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the righteous, for the God-fearing, for the people of piety. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us an entire month in which He instituted fasting. CM. And he says that the purpose of this CM, this fasting, so that you may achieve piety, so that you may become God fearing, so that you may become righteous people. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires of us. That through our fasting, that we would have acquired some degree of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is taqwa? What is this piety, this God-fearingness, this righteousness? We look at a little conversation between two of the companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Umar ibn al-Khattab, he asked Ubayya ibn Kaab an taqwa. He asked Ubayya ibn Kaab, what is taqwa? And Ubayya ibn Kaab Asked him in return, Am I select a tariq and the shawk? Haven't you tread a path of turns? And Umar ibn al Khattab he said, Naam, yes. And so Ubayya ibn Kaab said to him, Famadha amilt. So what did you do? And he said, Umar ibn al Khattab, Shamirtu wajtahadtum. I applied myself. 
I made sure that I diligently applied myself so as to protect me from the thorns. He said, I lifted my clothing to my shin and walked carefully in the pathway so that the thorns would not prick me. And Ubayya ibn Khab, he said to him, فَذَلِكَ taqwa." That is taqwa. That is God-fearingness. That is piety. That is righteousness. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, it is said that taqwa, it is to abstain and refrain from everything that is wrong. Taqwa, when we look at it from a more technical sense, we are recognizing the ever presence, the ever watchfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we realize that everything that we do in life, whether it is small or large, whether it is major or minor, whether it is hidden or it is seen, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge of everything. And because of the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees and knows everything, this drives us to do what is virtuous. And it checks us from vice. It keeps us away from wrongdoing. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, this world is a world full of thorns. And if we are not careful, it is easy for us to slip from virtue to vice and from piety to perversity. If we are not careful, it is easy for us to be pricked by the thorns of this world. It is easy for us to fall into sins. And so we need to apply ourselves very carefully. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gave us an entire month in which we are told to apply ourselves and to refrain from involving ourselves in any type of wrongdoing. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, taqwa, it is said by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he pointed to his heart and he said, at taqwa ha huna, taqwa is in the heart. We do not know who has more taqwa than the other. Some people may demonstrate piety and righteousness outwardly, but inwardly there is something different. And so we encourage my dear brothers and my dear sisters that we strive to inculcate the qualities of those who have taqwa, the, the pious ones, the righteous ones. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, make haste to the forgiveness of your Lord and to Jannah. If we look carefully at this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites us first not to Jannah, but to Maghfirah, to forgiveness. We know that each and every one of us, we make mistakes. Every son of Adam makes mistakes. Every one of us, we make mistakes. And the best of those who make mistakes are the ones who turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they seek forgiveness for their mistakes. In order to enter Jannah, we must be pure. Man atallah bi kalbin salim. 
the one who returns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his sound, pure heart, that is the one who will enter Jannah. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed a bridge over the fire of hell. And in order to get into paradise, one must cross that bridge. The wisdom in it is that fire helps to purify. And so whatever sins, whatever thorns we have on us, it will be purified by the fire. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites us first of all to forgiveness. Seek the forgiveness of your Lord. وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And repent. O believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, All of you, all of mankind, repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seek His forgiveness, لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ So that you may be from among the prosperous ones, you may be from the successful ones. We all make mistakes. And so we need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek forgiveness for our mistakes. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was promised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that every mistake that he has made in the past and every mistake that he will make in the future, he has been forgiven for it. Yet he used to stand for long hours at night and he used to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking Allah's forgiveness. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he addressed his people and he said, Ya ayyuhan nas, Tubu ila Allah, Fa inni atubu ila Allah, Mi atamara fil yawm. O people, seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For verily I seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 100 times daily. This was Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger of Allah, the one who is masum, free of sins. And he used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And then we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Jannah. And Allah says this Jannah, it has been prepared for those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us look at our taqwa. Let us look at what we have accomplished during the month of Ramadan. And as we look at it, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, do not look at yourselves alone, but look at your families. Look at what you have done for your sons and daughters. Look at what you have done for your mothers and fathers. Look at what you have done for your spouses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says about the qualities of the muttaqun. Alladheena yunfiquna fi sarra wa dharra. Those who spend in ease. And in adversity. Those who spend in prosperity and in adversity. They are willing to share what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given unto them. They are willing to share the resources of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because everything belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِلَّهِ مِرَاثُ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ and to Allah belongs everything that is in the heavens and the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Malakum la tunfikuna fi sabilillah. What is wrong with you that you do not spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when everything that you have belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was very generous. But in the month of Ramadan, he became more generous. 
generosity to the highest extent. So much so that even if he did not have, he would look for those who have so that they can help him in giving to those who did not have. Generosity to such an extent that he was willing to sacrifice himself. And they give preference to their brothers. Even though poverty was their own lot. This was the generosity of the companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were willing to give and sacrifice themselves. They were poor, but they were willing to give in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّةِ وَالدَّرَّةِ Those who spend in prosperity and in adversity. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, how much have you acquired this quality of the muttaqun in this blessed month of Ramadan? How much have you instilled this quality within your children? There are many of our children today who make a lot of money. But they are not willing to part with even a dime of it in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the love, the hub, the love for giving in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was never instilled within them. How many parents do not spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How then can we expect our children to spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And my dear brothers and my dear sisters, it is not only in the building of masajid, it is not only in the building of Islamic schools, it is not only in the building of community centers, but people are starving in all parts of the world. People need our the resources that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. A few dollars of your resources can make a difference in the lives of so many in different parts of the world. People go without food. They go without water. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, this is the reality. How much have you instilled this quality of the muttaqun within yourselves and your sons and daughters, your mothers and fathers and your spouses and your extended family? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He continues, And those who control their anger, and my dear brothers and my dear sisters, how often we get angry and we do things that create chaos and confusion. So, it is so often that husbands get angry with their wives and wives get angry with their husbands. It is so often that children get angry with their parents and parents get angry with their children. It is so often that brothers get angry with their, their sisters and sisters get angry with their brothers. And we get angry with our siblings. And so often we come to the masjid and even in our own communities and we get angry because we see that something is not done the way that we want it to be done. And people are not careful to close their mouth and walk away and come back when they can control themselves. And so much chaos and confusion is being created in our families and in our communities. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was asked by a man, O Prophet of Allah, counsel me. And he said, La taghdab. And the man asked again and again, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam repeated it, La taghdab, La taghdab, do not be angry. And how often we become angry, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we become upset and we create problems within our families. Have we instilled this quality of the muttaqun within ourselves and within our families? And those who are forgiving unto mankind, another beautiful quality of the muttaqun. Those people who are willing and ready to forgive those who have done wrong to them. 
Even though they did not ask for forgiveness. But you are willing to take a step forward. How many people will leave Ramadan? How many mothers and fathers will exit this month of Ramadan and they haven't forgiven their sons and daughters? And how many sons and daughters will exit Ramadan and they haven't forgiven their mothers and fathers? And how many spouses will exit Ramadan and they haven't forgiven one another? And how many brothers and sisters and uncles and aunts and nephews and nieces will exit Ramadan and they haven't forgiven one another? We pray for the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this blessed month of Ramadan. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, You have promised forgiveness. Man sama Ramadana imanan wa ahtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min zambi. He who fasts Ramadan with faith, with iman, and with expectation of reward, Allah will forgive him his previous sins. And so through our fasting, we are expecting forgiveness for our sins, our individual sins. And yet again, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man qama Ramadan imanan wa ahtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min zambi. He who observes Ramadan with everything that comes with Ramadan, with its prayers, with its fasting, its dua, its zikr, its tilawa, he who observes Ramadan with everything that comes with it, and with iman, with the expectation of reward from Allah, Allah will forgive him his sins. And so we expect that what we do during the month of Ramadan, through it, we will have forgiveness of our personal sins. And yet again, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man qama laylatal qad imanan wa ahtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min zambi. He who prays the night of Qadr, stands the night of Qadr with iman. And with expectation of reward, Allah will forgive him his previous sins. And so we prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yet again, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said about forgiveness, that when we help the fasting one, we provide iftar for the fasting one, we will have forgiveness for our sins. We will have redemption from the fire of hell. And we will have reward equal to the reward of the one who is fasting without taking away anything from him. And so, so many opportunities are given to us to have forgiveness for our sins. Allah will forgive us if we are forgiving to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We expect forgiveness from Allah and we do not want to forgive the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, one of the qualities of the muttaqun is that they are people who are forgiving unto one another. Don't make Ramadan leave you, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, and you have animosity and hatred and enmity in your hearts for your family members and for others in your community. Ask forgiveness. Forgive people. And then Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he encouraged his companions that you are brothers unto one another. Al Muslimu Akhuwul Muslim. The Muslim is a brother unto another Muslim. He doesn't harm him, doesn't bear any malice for him. Do we live our lives in this way? Another quality of the Muttaqun. Wallahu yuhibbul muhsinin. And Allah loves those who do good. So the muttaqun are people who are always engaged in doing good things. They're not only doing good in the month of Ramadan. They do good every moment of their lives. And one of the greatest good that you can do, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, 
is to bring people to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Encourage them to do what is right and to keep away from what is wrong. Sometimes we think that da'wah, it is for non-Muslims only. But this da'wah, this invitation, it is for our Muslim families, our Muslim brothers and sisters, because there are so many who are away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In every generation, as we look from one generation to another, we see more detachment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is a fear that the next generation to come, there will be a greater detachment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From one generation to another generation, we see people detaching themselves from their families. We grew up in different parts of the world where many families used to be together. In these parts of the world, we have one brother in California, one in Texas, and one in Canada. And sometimes they only see one another once per year. And so there is that detachment, family detachment from generation to generation. We need to invite people always to good. We need to invite people always to recognize the fact that their return is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best of speech as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And who is better than in speech than the one who invites to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do not invite to wrongdoing. Sometimes we sit and we talk and we talk nonsense. And instead of making a difference in people's lives and in our own lives, a positive difference, we make a negative difference. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, use this blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given unto you. Speech. To invite people to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ And who is better in speech than the one who invites to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا And he continues to do good things. وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And he says, I am from among those who have surrendered my life to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, the muttaqun, they are people, the verse continues, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, And if, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَ أَوْ ظَلَمُوا عَنْ فُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهِ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ And those, when they do wrong, when they commit major mistakes, crimes, when they wrong themselves, they do not just let it go by. They remember Allah and they ask for forgiveness. And Allah forgives them if they are sincere. For there is none to forgive except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever we do wrong, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who forgives. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, if we look at Surah Al-Baqarah, the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says again about the qualities of the muttaqun. Alif Lamim, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِي هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنْزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنْزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُوقِنُونَ الله سبحانه وتعالى he says ألف لامين ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه in this book there is no doubt 
Hudan lil muttaqin in it, it is guidance for those who fear Allah, the muttaqun. And who are they? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives six qualities. He says they are people who believe in the unseen. They believe in Allah even though they do not see Him. They believe in angels. They believe in Jannah and Jahannam even though they haven't experienced Jannah and Jahannam. They haven't seen it, but they believe in it. They are people who establish regular worship. They spend their time in the ibadah, in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In doing things that will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they recognize the fact that everything that they have in life, it came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so they spend out of what Allah has given them in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they believe in everything that was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They believe in the Quran. And they believe in the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was an explanation of the Quran. They believe in what he brought. And they believe in the scriptures that were revealed before the Quran. The Torah and the Injil and the Zabur and Suhuf Ibrahim, the pages of Ibrahim. And the Muttaqun are people who have the assurance of the hereafter within their hearts. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, what have we accomplished during this blessed month of Ramadan? Don't measure your accomplishment based on the fact that you would have fasted 29 or 30 days in the month of Ramadan. Don't base your accomplishment on the fact that you prayed every night the Tahajjud, Salatul Tarawi, and you prayed your five daily prayers. This is your personal accomplishment. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you for it. What difference has Ramadan made in your personal life and in the life of your families? Were you praying and fasting and your families were sleeping and eating and drinking at home? Were you giving charity and your families were storing up their wealth and hoarding it? Were you kind and compassionate and your families were the opposite of that? What difference did Ramadan make between your lives and the lives of your family? How closer are you to Allah and how closer are your families to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? My dear brothers and my dear sisters, as you measure Ramadan, your accomplishment in Ramadan, Look at your com accomplishment from this perspective. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, if there is one thing that you do in life, strive to make sure that you are from among the righteous ones and that your families are from the, among the righteous ones. The greatest investment that you can make is investing in making sure that your families are in the right environment and they are attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The greatest, the greatest investment that you can make is to make sure that on the day of judgment that you and your families would be saved from the fire of hell. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. O you who believe, save yourselves and your families from the fire of hell. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, let us look at this story about taqwa and the God-fearingness. And the result of it, because if you don't have the right foundation, then you will not get the right results. There was Umar ibn al-Khattab. He was, when he was a al mu'mineen, he used to go around the outskirts of Medina. And he used to check on his people. One night he saw a light in a distance in a home. And he went to check on the home. And there he found 
a mother telling her daughter, bring water so that we can mix the milk with water and make it plentiful, and so we'll make enormous profit. Umar ibn al-Khattab had forbidden that. And the mother, the daughter said to the mother, this is something that is forbidden by Umar ibn al-Khattab. How can we do it? Amir al-Mu'mineen said not to do it. And she said, the mother said, Fa'ayna nahnu min Amir al-Mu'mineen. Look where we are and how far Amir al-Mu'mineen is. And the daughter, she said to the mother, In kana Amir al-Mu'mineen la yaranam, farabba Amir al-Mu'mineen yaranam. Verily, if... Amir al-Mu'mineen does not see us, that the Lord of Amir al-Mu'mineen sees us. Allah, He knows everything. Umar ibn al-Khattab, when he heard these words from that girl, she was in her teens. He encouraged one of his sons to get married to her, to ask for her hand in marriage. And she accepted the proposal. And out of their marriage came one by the name of Laila. And Laila became the mother of one of the greatest leaders of Islam, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, who is considered the fifth caliph of the Muslims. So if you set the foundation right, the choice should be on taqwa. The fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then your progeny insha'Allah will have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see in our families today, our boys and girls are marrying out of Islam. We see in our families today, total disregard for the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, what has Ramadan taught you? How close have you got to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He makes us from among the muttaqun. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And that He saves us from the torment of hellfire. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمنين المؤمنات من كل ذنب وأتوب إليه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رضوان الله عليهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد my dear brothers and my dear sisters just as a reminder, again, the muttaqun, they are people who believe in Allah. They believe in His angels, in His books, in His prophets. They are people who establish prayers. They are people who spend out of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon them. Whether it is in, you know, they are in prosperity or in adversity. The muttaqun, they are people who control their wrath. They are people who are forgiving unto one another. They are people who continuously do good. The muttaqun are people who constantly recognize the fact that they are sinners. They make mistakes and they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. The muttaqun are those who do not repeat their wrongdoings and they have patience in trials and tribulations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, His relationship with the muttaqun. Inna Allah yuhibbul muttaqin. Verily Allah loves the God-fearing, the righteous ones. Wallahu waliul muttaqun. And Allah is the friend of, He is the protector of the God-fearing. And my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa'alamu anna Allah ma'al muttaqin. 
and be aware, learn that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is with al-muttaqun. Remember on the day of judgment, friends will be foes unto one another, except those of taqwa. So my dear brothers and my dear sisters in this world, befriend people of taqwa. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, even if you are uh, you know, the, in, in company, make sure that those who eat your food are the muttaqun, the people of taqwa. So spend your time with the people of taqwa. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was asked, who is the best of people? And he said, atqahum, the best of you are those who are the most righteous, the ones who have piety. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the opportunity to increase our taqwa. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He accepts everything that we put forth in the month of Ramadan. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasting, our prayers, our our dua, our dhikr, our tilawa. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He forgives us for our shortcomings, our mistakes. لقد أمرنا الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن العظيم حيث قال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وأرضى الله من خلفائه الأربع أبي بكر وأمر وعثمان وعلي ونستة الباقين المبشرين بالجنة ونسائر الصحابة ونتابعين ومن تبعهم بسان لا يوم الدين اللهم عز إسلام والمسلمين الله اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور الإيمان وثبت قلوبنا على دين الإسلام ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم عباد الله إن الله يمول بالعدل والإسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يذكم لكم تذكرون فذكروا الله لا نعمه واشكروه على آلائه ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أكم السلا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر